Broadcasting from the Any Hour Services Podcast Studios, I'm your host, Mike Wilson, and on this episode of In the House, we're going to be talking about alternatives to chemical drain cleaners. Mm. Let's go. In the House is a podcast about the major systems in the house. Electrical, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. Each week. Each, each wife? Is what? that what you said? I don't know what it's I said. Utah. Each week. Mm. Each week I'm joined by a panel of experts. We pick a topic and we discuss it in depth. It's meant to be informative and hopefully bring you some value. Um, I can't remember Austin. I, I remember. I've asked you this. Well, yeah, I, sorry. I remember Austin. Um, I've asked you this many times before. And... You always like dodge the question. And so I don't know if you're ready for this question right now. At what point can I stop telling people what the show is about? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think like 50, this is episode, what'd you say? Number 52 or 53. something? 53. 53. Yeah. I think that's probably sufficient. But, but when we look at the and analytics. You're just talking about that, talk about the major systems in the house, right? Is that the part you're wanting to cut? I don't, I don't necessarily want to cut anything. If people love hearing me say that or it's bringing people value, I Every want to keep saying Every word out it. of your mouth is gold. So the more you can keep in there, the better. Never mind, Austin. We're good. There we go. <laughs> and back. <laughs> I've got Jesse and Chasen back in the studios oh. with me today. Do that again. They're managers over the drain and sewer departments, any hour services. If you're going to introduce us like that, we got to change the, the upfront yeah, music to <laughs> saxophone. We need something else. Waka chicka, waka chicka, waka chicka, waka chicka, banana. How was. So, uh, Valentine's Day. How were your Valentine's uh, Day celebrations? Did you do anything romantic, Jesse? Very romantic. <laughs> like, are you like a overly romantic guy? Like, do you like try and get off early from work come home with flowers and chocolates and like go to dinner like tell me tell me where you're at uh yes no yes he does and he drops it all off at my house and mm -hmm. then goes home mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you do get off early from work you said yes no yes no you don't do flowers i do do flowers you do do flowers so no to chocolate yeah, do you do said flowers <laughs> <laughs> all right all right we're back i had to mm -hmm. you don't do chocolate no, my my. Uh, I mean, it, it depends. My my uh, wife's not huge into that stuff. She she loves the flowers though. She does. She's not big into candy. Not really. Or just not chocolate candy. Yeah, specific candy, but she's not an candy. overly. Of course, it counts. She no. get over candy. Chocolate's its own class. No, it's can't like mm -hmm. go down the candy aisle. It is made up of mainly chocolate. Yeah, go down the automotive aisle at Macy's. They got paper towels. It doesn't mean it's candy just because it's on that aisle. Do they have well, first a, off? But they have names. Candy of, is not named automotive, and it wouldn't be on the automotive aisle. And you're going too literal. You're going too literal. But they have All chocolatiers. Have you not seen the commercials? Chocolatiers. I chocolatiers. Don't, I don't think no, they. No, no. Chocolatiers. Chocolatiers. You, Lindor you truffles. This. <laughs> well, yeah. That's like the name of Austin's podcast. What is it? The entertainology. Yeah, I don't think they <laughs> Sounds have. Sounds like one of those made up words. Uh, by <laughs> the way, Austin, who produces our show, you can go check out Ask the Goat. It's awesome. Podcast. It's got some great stuff in mm -hmm. it. It's an entertainology <laughs> podcast. And if that's intriguing and you're not sure what that is, go find out. Go check it out. Anyway, sorry. Um, so. Yes. Valentine's. Yeah, Valentine's is great. So my uh, wife's whatever. birthday is close to Valentine's, so I get a double whammy. Do you yes. have to celebrate both? I usually try to celebrate both. Not days. have to. I guess that <laughs> sounds horrible. To. Yeah, <laughs> I have to. Yep. So, at the risk of <clears throat> upsetting all of our female fans, mm. um, every time I explain, like the way my wife and I have chosen to celebrate Valentine's Day, sometimes people like like, oh, that you're does such it, a jerk. Does it start with a date at McDonald's? No, that's Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> She won't go to McDonald's. Actually, that's Every another funny story. Tuesday. You know, the, the memes and everything's about like, you know, uh, usually the other person can't decide, like, where do you want to go to dinner? Mm -hmm. I don't know, like, whatever. So when my wife busts out with, I don't know, where do you want to go? First off, my wife is like gluten intolerant. Wait, are you mm. going to tell me McDonald's is your go-to on those days? Whenever she says, I don't know, where do you want to go? I know she's just like, avoiding mm -hmm. the question and so i reward her with things that like i am totally fine going and eating <laughs> like okay cool and then all i do is i just look at the road we're on and i start naming all the fast food things and she's like you're doing that on purpose i'm like 
I'm real. I pull in right now and get Anywhere. some chili dogs at Wiener Schnitzel. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Wiener yes. Hut's delicious. Wiener Hut. Weenie Hut. Yep. It's, <laughs> it's what I call it. It's Weenie Hut. <laughs> That's amazing. <clears throat> um, you, they got some cheap chili dogs that are delicious. Okay, okay, okay. We're going to move on. Um, <laughs> I don't know why we did this. I'm not even going to explain the Valentine's Day at my house. The next time you go to Weenie house. Hut, you give me a holler. I've never been to Weenie Hut. You just said you've been to Weenie Hut. No, I said I Wiener would schnitzel. pull over to go to Wiener Schnitzel. Right. Why can't we just call it Wiener Schnitzel? I don't or, know. Because it looks Wiener like schnitzel. a hut and they cook hot dogs. Okay, he's not wrong. Hot dog hut, though, doesn't Aren't they sound... A-frame, though? It's more like Wiener Cabin. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> and either way. That sounds really close to Winter Cabin. Like, it sounds lovely. It does. <laughs> uh, chemical drain cleaners. Mm-hmm. They spend a lot of money. Uh, that wasn't too long, right? We don't need to do the thing. Okay. Um, chemical drain cleaners, they spend a lot of money advertising and figuring out how to train people um, that whenever you've got a blockage in the drain, all you need is this bottle of chemical drain cleaner. But I have never heard a plumber recommend using those things. It's actually quite the opposite. So in your opinion, why shouldn't people be using chemical drain cleaners? Before Chasen gets real scientific, because he's really good at it, the one (laughs) thing that the reason they don't recommend it a lot is because Reason plumbers don't. Yes. And it's not all the time, but a majority of the time, you would have to not use that drain for a while for that chemical to actually do its job to the fullest. Now, it's not all the time, but a big, uh, a lot of the time, you'd have to put that chemical down there and then just not use that drain and let it do it. Don't let it do its thing. So that's, that's one of the reasons it's really not um, feasible in most cases. Your ego scientific. Yeah. <clears throat> as scientific Clear as I can. For oh, it. Okay. we're getting ready. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I roll up my sleeves, but. Did you hydrate? Good point. Mm. Um, While Chasen is hydrating, let me just done. remind you. Oh, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. I was really just going to be killing time. <laughs> um, so not really that scientific, but um, the biggest reason I never tell anybody to use those is it will eat your pipe. Mm. Um, it will go ahead and cut through some of your blockages and stuff. And a lot of times it's going to cut right through your pipe too. Uh, and so it, if you like your pipes and you like water to have somewhere to go, that's not the floor below the bathtub you're trying to clear, then don't use those. It will eat through pipes. When I think about the floor below the bathtub, I always think of that scene in uh, Breaking Bad Yep, when they pour acid in the tub well and that's a really good example actually because remember he tells the guy to go get the plastic tub Mm -hmm. with the number this plastic whatever it is and that's because they're made to resist some of those acids that he tells them to use and those same acids are what's used in these drain cleaners that we're talking about Mm. and so that's one of the reasons plastic is so much better is it is a little more resistant to some of those acids and things but in the older homes with galvanized steel cast iron uh, that that acid will actually eat through the metal pipe just Mm. like it did that cast iron bathtub well i've also i've heard that uh you know over time because there are people that will use that chemical drain cleaner stuff almost Mm -hmm. like they think they're maintaining their drain Mm -hmm. because like oh i want to avoid issues so i put this stuff down every week Mm -hmm. or every month or however often they're doing it and like you see pipes that are pulled out of the house where the bottom's just like channeled out you know Mm -hmm. so well, and it's even hard on the joints, uh, like in the plastic pipe, the plastic does pretty well, but the glue that we put the joints together with, it would be dissolved by those acids and things too. Gotcha. So there's some natural products on the market that um, work differently. What's the difference in those? So there's a lot of differences. One of them it is in the way they work and how effective they are at actually clearing a blockage out. Those natural ones are not made to clear a blockage once it's already formed. They're made to prevent blockages from forming as easily. And they are made of enzymes, different bacteria in there, and they eat the organic material that builds up in the pipes. And most clogs in in plumbing are from organic material, uh, cosmetics, things like that. Um, And so they're made to pour down regularly, like some people use the acids, unfortunately. But you do pour them down, most of them monthly. And it lives in that pipe and will actually grow and feed on the organic buildup as it forms and keeps that pipe cleaner. It also does not eat any of the pipe. It doesn't eat any inorganic material. And and if it runs out of organic material, it just dies and washes down the drain. 
the the other thing with that that I I like when when we talk about the visual of it is like you know the other the drain cleaners and stuff they're heavy and they stay on the bottom and all they're doing is like mm-hmm. maybe eating a hole through you know uh, something but these enzymes they they actually will they grow feed and on the material yeah and they'll like go up mm-hmm. and clear the uh, a larger space in the in the pipe for those to mm-hmm. to work so um, wh- what are are there what are the different products that that you guys use? There are several out there, and you can walk in any hardware store and see a few different options for them. The ones that we've used the most are, we used to use BioClean a lot, um, and you can get that one around. Um, it's a powdered form. Uh, we've, over the last couple of years, switched to one called Bio One. Uh, two major, the biggest difference between the two is one's powder, one's liquid. There's a couple of reasons we like the liquid better. One, it's just easier to use. Uh, you just pour it into a little thing and pour it straight down the drain. It's done with the powder. You have to mix it with water, get it to, to activate, and then you pour it down. The powder ones quite often have a filler inside them. And so they use, and, and I'm not taking anything away from BioClean because it is a great product, but it uses uh, sawdust as a filler in there to insulate that bacteria mm. as it's sitting in the jar. So you're also adding sawdust to your drain a little bit. Um, and I've had customers who've asked, I pour this stuff down there and it leaves this brown stuff around the drain. It's the sawdust. It doesn't go away as well. It does wash down and it doesn't stick, but the liquid ones don't have any of that filler. And so it puts the bacteria in there without any extra stuff that's going to cause any issues. Um, and it's just easier to use. Is, uh, as far as their potency or their effecti- effectiveness, is mm-hmm. one more effective than the other, or is the difference really just liquid power, powder? I think I have a perception that the liquid's a little more, just because the bacteria in there is currently active, mm. whereas with the powder, you, it has to be activated. And so I think the liquid, and this is just my thought, I don't have any proof to this one. Um, I, I feel a video coming on. I think uh, I might have to get some uh, beakers and like test them ooh. and see the difference. Yeah, we've had a couple of technicians who've run little tests like that to see if they actually do anything because mm-hmm. it's one of those products most people are skeptical about. And, you know, like most things, it's good, healthy skepticism is a good thing. Um, but we've had guys test them out. I've tried them in uh, some unique applications like really dirty uh, sump pump basins or sewage ejector pump basins that get a lot of buildup in them and you pour those in there to see if it doesn't and you can actually see it reacting Mm. Um, and so they're both effective and one of the big differences is going to be the shelf life powdered forms are going to last longer on the shelf whereas the liquid ones you've got about 18 months before Mm. it all the bacteria dies off Um, but in most cases if you're using it properly you're going to use it before 18 months is up anyway if you're using it if properly. You're using, and the hardest thing with all Actually, of them. Actually, I think you may have just sold me on the powder one because I remember, uh, or at least for my house, because I remember uh, a plumber coming over this before any hour was doing, you know, drain cleaning and stuff. And my wife called a plumber over and they sold her a thing of bio clean, the powder, powder. one. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, like, there was something on. They, like, fixed it and, like, oh, hey, you can get this, you know, bio mm-hmm. clean thing. Yeah. And so um, I think it's still sitting under our bathroom sink uh, years it, and it years later. It will also How often do you lose. look under your sink? Uh, not very well, often. You've only got about four well, years How do you look under yours? Every day. Look, looking for what? Hair product. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I keep my hair product in the drawer. <laughs> I mean, I guess the taller bottles are under there, but when I open the cabinet to grab hairspray, like I'm not looking. Like I'm not like looking for where's the bio clean well and if it's been there as long as you say it's gone dead too it has how long mm-hmm. does it last usually three to four years on a powder but see my forgetfulness and procrastination I'd if you're like, not going to use it why buy either one uh same reason most people buy things like the emotion of the cell good like right intentions in. <laughs> right no like, I, I tell oh, this, everybody this sounds super easy like i can avoid <laughs> oh, it is having a plumber easy. come back out if by just doing this drain treatment mm-hmm. and you have every intention in the world of like doing that and then it gets under the sink and no one looks under their sink every day yeah no and i still feel better about <laughs> not putting sawdust <laughs> Except I, Jesse. I know my bio clean and bio one never died so because he used them. <laughs> is there an expiration date on it? Because now I need to go back and like see it's how. It's not an FDA product because it's not yeah. ingested, so they don't have to put an expiration date on it. Oh, really? Yeah. So the best thing to do is write the date you bought it. That's a good I think that's on, the a good bio, tip. on the Bio mm-hmm. One bottles, there is a spot for that, isn't there? It has a spot to put where you bought it. Yeah, yeah. on the Bio One. But it doesn't one. have like when it was like no. activated in the factory. No, but we go lab. through it quickly. It, it gets out pretty fast. Gotcha. Um, but, and not having sawdust in it is big enough reason for me to go to liquid. But I tell most people, just put a reminder in your phone every month. 
And with with Siri and stuff, it's so easy to say, hey, remind me every month to do buy one. What if you just wrote it on your calendar? I could do that. And I can I mean, use not a, a lot pen of people, for that. Not, not a lot of people I'd have paper my pen calendars. To you, but I think it's the same one I had last time we did a podcast. So you've already heard this. Yeah, those Uncle Ben pens. <laughs> How dare you? Big Ben, Uncle Ben? No, the this tower, one's, the clock tower? I do have a Big Ben one, but this one is Buckingham Palace. That's not the same thing? No. Big what? Ben is a clock tower on Buckingham Palace. That sounds like the same building. No, because this is a, this is from the windows of Buckingham Palace. There is a Big Ben pen that's from the architecture of Big Ben. Mm-hmm. Jeez, man, you uncultured swine. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I haven't watched enough episodes of The Crown, I guess. <laughs> I've never seen one. No, You've never seen The Crown? Mm-hmm. Never. No. Okay. Is it any good? I think so. I mean, so. I'm about done with my current show. It's time for something new. Well, I don't know if... I mean, you could. So The Crown is... I mean, you could probably go check out Ask the Goat. Um, Do you, you talk know, about his Crown inter, on Ask his the Goat? His Next oh, no. episode. Just kidding. Next it's episode. not on Ask the Goat. He talks about <laughs> much more interesting things. This is like <laughs> Downton Abbey quality <laughs> level. So, so it's uh, good for going to the sleep. The Queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth, is that who's the Queen right now living in your pen? Yes. So... Uh, <laughs> The Buckingham Palace pen? Yes. So Queen Elizabeth, she's been queen forever. A long time. And she's old, right? And so like The Crown is a Netflix series. It's not a documentary. They actually, the, the royal family does not approve of Ooh, the stuff. That makes it more appealing. I think so. Mm-hmm. But the way they do it, I mean, it seems really legit because they put black and white photos of the real people up at the end of the show. Must Sneaky. be real, right? Yeah, <laughs> totally. So, so anyway, but that's, it's, it's the show following from her. It's not inauguration. Is it coronation? Is that what happens that with the royal right. people? Yeah. Like it, from her, from her dad dying and her becoming queen and goes through. I think there's like two or three seasons out right now. What? And right now, it's at the part where uh, Elizabeth, not Elizabeth, uh, the the one Princess Di, oh. Anna, she is not dead yet, oh. and so, but she is in that. Uh, it's coming up in that show. I assume next season because she's. She's had her two kids, mm-hmm. the princes. Mm-hmm. That's the crown. I think only one of them's a prince now. Mm-hmm. When when Harry when the other bailed. guy, yeah, he left. He was Harry the old one or the young one? The younger, younger one. one. Well, watching the show, it's like, well, if you're like down the line, it's like, yeah, you're not really. By the time the because like the the son hasn't even become king yet, and then his son is the next heir, and then if he he's already had kids, and so the mm-hmm. heirs of the heir. So like the one that left, I mean, yeah, yeah. Probably didn't move. They call him. Much. They call him a figurehead. Like That's not a whole true. lot of. It's true. Not a whole lot of power going on there, but a whole lot of like. Well, formalness. Will. They would not approve of me mixing up Big Ben no. being a part of. I feel like I was I'm putting you in the stocks. I fit. Good reference. I don't know that they still do that though. They should. <laughs> do they have a? Does Parker and Bowles have a pen that? Uh, Parker and Bowles, where are you yeah, coming up with all this Bowles? stuff? <laughs> Uncle Ben, Parker and Bowles. I don't and know. Parker Jotter? <laughs> this is a Parker Jotter, yes. Does Parker and Jotter have... <laughs> There's no and. There's no and, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Does Parker Jotter have okay, a brig? Okay, okay, one more. The Briggs. Did I not a, say it? No, right? you did. You did. But that's like saying, like, is a Toyota Camry car, like, it's a Parker made Parker's the make, Jotter's the model. Oh. Yeah. Parker Jotter. Yes. I got it. So the name of the pen is Jotter. Yes. I thought you told me in the previous episode that I said this it is was a the big, Parker it was Jotter. the Big Ben or it was the British well, this is, architecture. It's, it's, it is from London architecture, yes. But the this is Buckingham. a Jotter made by Parker. They just have a line of Jotters based on London architecture. Do me a favor. Any pen aficionados out there that think I'm just being foolish and like you're in all of them team chasing. I don't know that we have that many <laughs> pen aficionados. That's what I'm trying to ascertain here is I'm like just saying all of the ones we have oh, are going to anyone listening foolish. is going to think I'm foolish. <laughs> I, I, uh, I agree. <laughs> they would not we be wrong. We should do a whole episode on pens. I'll bring in my sets. It couldn't be any less relevant than the episodes no, we do about every technician we have carries a pen in his pocket it's true do you have parker jotter stock like are you is this like a pyramid it's scheme? Privately is this owned. like a it's privately owned <laughs> i don't know but if they ever do go public i will invest. and there's several of us that really actually believe our pens matter 
pen makes the man. You the way you said that, it makes it sound like you're one of those. I am one of those. Oh, he's got the zebra. Is it's that the seven hundred one? He's got the seven hundred one. <laughs> this this isn't a, a a Bic buy in bulk box. What do you got? Oh, I, I don't even have. Don't a, don't, don't, don't even, even, put, even, it, even don't put it in your pocket. I don't have a pen and don't put or that a pencil. One. Don't no. Oh my goodness! Look at how the lid stick. You're gonna hit your face. You on can't it. even see the company that you work for. Yeah, and it's it's like everything. It's so eye catching by the bright childish color. All you see is a big ugly pen lid. Now don't get me wrong. A big yeah, right hold on. Let me, What's there, your the way you're talking about pens? And my pen is not childish at all. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. You did. I was just pointing out that like so, that's a good point. So Jason. let's throw some names out there so that you you know like uh, Reagan, Pat, Reagan Baldwin, Pat Nate Devonish, Troy Jensen Coulter, carries a jotter. Troy Jensen, Mark Millet, Mark Millet. Yeah, we got people that know more about pens than you think. Mm-hmm. I. Matt Hansen. Matt, Han- Matt yes. Hansen uses he, a jotter. We, yep. He calls it his fancy pen. Yep. We just Chris. We just christened him. Well, I shouldn't. Uh, yeah, let's we, go. What? what, uh, what should, we, we introduced ju- him. Introduced him. Yes. Can I? Uh, can I get a Parker Jotter? I will bring you at a Parker my Jotter. local pen hut. There's what's a what's the pen hut? Is this a real store? No, it's a different store. Oh. But I call we it should, pen hut because we, they yes. have pens. Yes, uh, Jotters are pretty readily available. Yeah, you can get them at. Uh, I believe it's Office Max. They you mean carry, Office, Office Depot? One of those huts carries them. <laughs> Uh, I go to, uh, I'm going to make a shout out to <laughs> Tabula Raza at Trolley Square. They have a lot of great pens. That's where I go for my pens. Tabula Raza. Tabula Raza. It's a stationary store in Trolley Square in Salt Lake. Wow. Yeah. I also get my soap there. Primo. <laughs> I know. It makes sense. It makes sense. It's, it, let's just call it a, a store for cultured people. <laughs> Where can I go and get my stationery <laughs> and, and soap. my soap? Uh, I mean, it sounds weird, but the soap is dope. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah dope it really soap, is. Huh? Comes straight from France. It's fantastic. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> we, 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 we. come and get this fancy soap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's Little in bar, bar only place We can make I another get, letter, like any reference. <laughs> the French end every sentence with... <laughs> 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 I go to Dubu La Raza for my soap. <laughs> <laughs> Stop <laughs> offending people. <laughs> I apologize. I do have French in my blood if that, if that helps. I don't know that anything can help this. All right. Um, if if you're out there and you want to maintain your drains, look for a natural product. Uh, we You bio clean, bio one, uh, but something with natural enzymes that are not going to be uh, chemical based that are going to uh, damage your drains more than they're actually helping. So that's the show. That is the show. Good one. Was it? Good one. Mm-hmm. We got enough pen talk in there, I think. Hmm. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next Tuesday with a new episode. I, I was I was tempted to like be drawn back in, but I resisted. Well, there's a lot I'm of information. Of you. We we know what kind of drain cleaners are safe. We know what kind of pens you should be using, and we know where to buy soap now. And so, I mean, there's a lot in this podcast. I think Parker was very, Francois yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> for stationary, and we know and where to get Tabula good, good hot dogs. <laughs> Good hot dogs. Yep. And the wiener hut. And the wiener hut. Yep. <laughs> now, I do want to make a little piece actually applicable to the episode. <laughs> Just because the bottle of what you're buying says safe for all pipes does not mean it really is. It's kind of one of the great false advertising schemes of our day those acid products they say flat on the bottle safe for all pipes and it is just not true it's yeah. like uh, flushable wipes approved yeah. by plumbers <laughs> yeah well, yeah if it has to say approved by plumbers it's probably not well the, they become super dangerous and uh, damaging to your older pipes that have small little divots and cavities in them where that acid gets into those and sits and can't mm. get out and so it just sits there over time, it obviously waters down and, and washes away, but I said over time. And so during that time that it's sitting in that little cavity or divot, it's just eating away and making that problem a bigger problem. And even more so, if you have a septic tank, do not use anything acid-based. Yes. It will get in your tank and kill the bacteria that is crucial for that system to work properly. And so that's when the enzyme products and things are super beneficial too, is in a septic tank, pouring acid in there will actually damage the effectiveness of your septic system. Mm-hmm. If you want to know more about septic, septic systems, go back and check out episode. No, I don't one of them. <laughs> septic <laughs> systems. Anyway, that is the show. We'll be back next Tuesday with a new episode of In the House. 
If you'd like to know more about Any Hour Services, visit anyhourservices.com. I've been your host, Mike Wilson, and you've been listening to In In the the house. House.